Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's video, I want to show you these really cool must have distortion effects for your videos, whether you're editing a music video, a vlog, a skit, or anything of that matter then this is going to be a really useful tutorial. I wanna give a special thanks to Pixel Film Studios for sponsoring today's video. Also, don't forget to check them out on YouTube where they provide their own comprehensive Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials covering a variety of topics. You can visit their YouTube playlist, which I will link down below. And as always, please use my coupon code KingPixelPro at checkout so you guys can save on that plugin. If you guys go over to the titles and generators and you go under the titles, you're gonna see the plugin here. It's just a very simple, and you can also find the same plugin in the effects. Under the effects browser, if you go down the list, you're gonna see the Pixel Film Studios. Final Cut Pro 10 Distortion plugin. There's 19 items in this one here. The way that the titles work, you just click and drag this above your media. Anything really below this will be affected. Go under the effects here and under the distortion, you're gonna see a bunch of presets made for you. And of course you can go in and adjust them, tweak them to your liking. So if you kind of hover over it and I push play, you're gonna see what it looks like as you can see. And then you also have one that is like a checkerboard, so a slightly different pattern. You have one that is like a grid. You have one with a heat wave, which is kind of cool because it actually creates a realistic heat wave. And you know, you have spinning lines, spinning pentagons, spinning triangles, and so on. So what we're gonna be doing is using the cell warp. We're gonna hold option and drag upwards to make a copy first, and then drag the draw mask uh, preset onto the top clip and then you're gonna make a very rough selection of him because I mean for now the video is not moving too much so it should be fine so I'm just gonna make a few points kind of like this that way we don't have to make too many adjustments with our keyframes so we'll just go something like this so now we're gonna go over to the inspector tab and then next to the draw mask we're going to go to the control points just add a keyframe under that there on the plus sign and then you're going to skip 10 frames so at the very beginning hold shift and right on the arrow key together to skip 10 frames and then just move these points to the outside of your subject so that this is the area that we're going to be kind of keyframing and then do the same thing hold shift right on the arrow key to skip another 10 frames and then you're going to click and drag the red line and the anchor points you can kind of skim through and see what it looks like looks fine to me so now that you have that, you're gonna see, if we go to the bottom clip and we select it, and we go over to the effects, and we go down to the plugin, the Final Cut Pro 10 Distortion plugin, you're gonna go under Distort, and you're gonna select the Cell Warp, and you're gonna drag that onto that clip. Because we masked him out, it's not going to apply it where we made our selection, which is what we want. So now that we have that, we wanna kind of get rid of this kind of harsh line here that you can kind of see. So you're gonna select the draw mask and you're gonna go over to the feather and just feather this outwards or inwards. I think I wanna feather this outwards to 70 or so. So now if I push play, it'll look like this. Now all we're gonna do is go to the beginning here, select the bottom clip with the cell warp plugin and you can now go down and, and adjust all of the parameters here. So you can change, say the overall mix, which is like kind of like the opacity between the original video and the preset that we just applied, which is the cell warp. Here you have the overall horizontal blur. And then if you go down to effect controls, you're gonna be able to adjust the cell size. So if you want something smaller, something like that, you definitely can. Or if you want something bigger, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna go back and just reset that. I think it's fine where it's at. And then the cell speed, you can adjust the speed if you want it to kind of go in a little bit faster. You also have keyframes for almost everything here, which is really nice to have, by the way. And then you have cell gradient, so you can actually change the gradient here. So if you wanna change the shadow here from black to say something else to like maybe pink or something. Then you have the distortion controls, so this will change the bump direction. So kind of like where the angle of that is going to appear and then you can also change the bump amount which is what we want here so we're going to start this off at zero and we're going to the beginning and we're going to add a keyframe next to the bump amount so that we don't have it playing yet we actually want it to kind of gradually come in so we're going to go to the end go one frame to the left and then just increase the bump amount you can bring it up all the way or just a little bit and then now if we go back and push play you're going to see it kind of coming gradually and it looks so, so cool. You can add multiple effects on top of each other as well. So you can do, say, the cell warp, and maybe you want to add 
the noise, you can do that too. So just click and drag it on that one. And now we have two effects applied on the same clip. And then the next one here is going to just be a very simple title overlay distortion effects. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the clouds one here, because I think this one's kind of cool. Again, you have different ones here. You can kind of preview, you have grid, you have uh, concentric shapes. So you have something that looks like this. And again, you have all of your settings here. You have grid, so you can kind of get a grid look here. So I'm gonna go with clouds. I'm gonna click and drag this here. I don't want it that long, so I'm gonna delete the rest. Select the title here, and you're gonna see what it looks like right now. So if I push play, this is a before and after. So before, after, very subtle, but it makes a big difference in your video. So. Here in the parameters, you can change the distortion controls, you can change the animation, the style controls, and the RGB controls. So I'm gonna go through this really quickly. Here you have the background type, so you can do normal or you can do RGB split. This does change it a little bit, so I'm gonna go back to normal. I think it looks cool this way. You can change the uh, angle for the distortion. So then you can also increase the amount. So you can also, if you go to zero, press enter, the effect, you won't be able to see it because it's at zero. We can also gradually increase it as well. So if you go to the beginning and you add a keyframe there next to amount at zero and you go to say about halfway and you increase this, you can do something that looks like this, which looks so cool. So the next one's gonna be the mango line. So I'm gonna click and drag that right above there. And now you're gonna see that we have this really cool kind of zoom blur distortion line effects going on here. So in the parameters, you can actually change all of the settings like we just did before. So I'm gonna change the direction on this one. So I'll move it more like that. Inner radius, you can expand that outwards or inwards. Outer radius, I think is fine. Waviness, you can make it kind of wavy if you want. So you can do something like this. Uh, I'm going to increase the Gaussian blur because I don't want too harsh of a line. You can see the lines are very edgy, like very sharp. So I'm going to go to the Gaussian blur, make sure that's enabled, and then the amount is at zero. So I'm gonna increase this quite a bit to maybe 50 or so. And what this does, it softens the edges so it's a bit more smooth, which is what I want. And I'm also gonna turn off the prism amount because I think this, this kind of looks nice where it's at. And you can also stack titles. So if you hold option on the clouds one and you drag it over the, the magna lines, you're gonna have this really wavy kind of trippy look here. I'm gonna delete that one. I think it's a little too much, but if you want that look, you can definitely do that. Also, I do wanna show you one last thing, and that's going to be kind of like these other tools that I want to show you because they are absolutely useful. And the first one's gonna be the grid warp tool. It's a trackable overlay that you would use, of course, with the title. This is gonna be kind of like one effect here that you can use. So this one's gonna be in the titles section, and you go down to the grid warp, and you have the grid warp tool. But I'm gonna use this one for this example. I'm just gonna click and drag this right above here. I'm gonna trim this and then delete the rest because we don't don't need that. Select the title, go over to the inspector tab, and then we're going to go ahead and enable the toggle grid. I'm going to have this flip the other way. I just want it to be uh, kind of like this way. And then I'm going to go down to the reset grid. So make sure you hit this button to reset the grid. And you're going to see the grid kind of be, kind of reset here. And if you have this enabled, it should look something like this. And you can also change the grid color in case your video has a different color. Or if you want the grid to be a little bit easier to see than change the color there. You can also change the grid width here. If you think it's too much, just bring it down. And you also have the brush controls, trackable controls, and so on. So first thing you need to do is go over to the track editor. You can also enable the track mode too if you want. But I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna go back to the beginning there, and I'm gonna click and drag this box, click on this white circle, and I'm gonna use this centerpiece here on his watch to track the, the center point here. And then I'm gonna hit the track forward button. This will track forward in real time and you can also track backwards if you want to. I made a full dedicated video on the actual tracker itself. So I'm gonna click on export data. I'm gonna click on confirm. I'm gonna close the window. And then now you should see the grid here kind of move like that. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we reset the grid. And then now if you see, you're gonna see this black circle with uh, kind of like over your cursor, which means you can then change the, you know, like the brush size. If you wanna make it smaller, you can do something like that. Or if you want it big, which I'm going to do. You can also change the outline width if you want it to be, you know, you can see it a little bit better. You can change the warp strength, the brush edge softness and so on. So I'm gonna go there and then I'm going to now draw over the area that I want to kind of distort. And then once I'm happy with the result, kind of play it through 
and then you're going to toggle off the toggle grid button there and then you go back and push play and you'll get a really unique and custom look here and then the other one that i want to show you is this really cool pretty much like a cloned video effect i go over to the effects browser and i go down to the Droust, which should be in the bottom here next to Droust Circle, or you can do the Droust Rectangular. For this example, I'm gonna go with the Droust Rectangular, so I'm gonna click and drag that directly onto the clip that you want to be affected. If I push play, you're pretty much done here. You can, of course, go and adjust the effect mix if you wanna add keyframes to anything. If you want transform controls, say you wanna scale this up or add keyframes and animate that, you definitely can. And then here you have the Droust controls. So if I go to the beginning and I have the on-screen controls here, I wanna start this off in the middle. So just click and drag that corner down to the center at the very beginning. And you're gonna see that that changes the X and Y points here next to ending point. What that will do is it will pretty much move it there at the beginning and then we can add the keyframes for X and Y and then go about halfway and then click and drag the on-screen control back to the right corner or wherever you think you want this to be. So I'm just gonna move it back so it looks like this. So now when I go back and push play, we have a really cool effect that looks just like that. Man, that looks so cool. So very simple, but yet yeah, very effective. Uh, another one that I wanna show you is this really cool, almost like a shape mask effect. So if I push play, we're gonna be kind of focusing on his earring here. So I'm gonna delete this one here and I'm gonna go over to the titles again here in the titles section and I'm gonna to go to the pulse. So this is gonna be under the pulse section and I'm gonna use the shape with mask. You can also use the multi-point with mask if you want to, but I'm gonna use this one for this example. I'm gonna click and drag that above, trim the end and delete that and then select the title. And then again, you have very similar of, uh, kind of settings or controls as the previous ones. So right now with the mode selection is on track mode because we have to track our subject or the area that you want to kind of track. So we're gonna go over to the track editor and this will open up the window so I'm gonna go to the beginning. I'm gonna track his uh, kind of earring. You can then adjust the size of this. So about here, I'm gonna track forward and then it's going to finish, click export data. And then once it's saved, close the window and you're gonna see nothing happens. So we're gonna go back here to the mode selection and change that to offset transform mode or mask edit mode. So what this will do is it'll actually allow you to kind of reposition the mask. You can also pivot the rotation for the Z axis the Y axis and the X axis. So maybe something like this, and then maybe like that. That could be kind of cool. And then you can also change the shape. So you can do maybe star one or star two, star three, or you can do like a square, maybe a diamond or a hexagon. For this example, I'm gonna go with teardrop two. And you can also change the roundness if you think that's too sharp. I'm gonna round this a little bit. You can also blur it if you want to. You can also add keyframes to these as well. And then offset transform on screen and control here. You can then adjust the settings for this here. You can also clear the mask data. So I'm gonna go back here to the mode selection and change that to, I think I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go with display mode, which is like the final result. Now, if I go back and push play, you have this really cool pulse effect, which almost looks like it's, um, I don't know how to describe this, but it almost looks like it's a, a visual vibration sound effect, which is kind of cool. I think it looks really nice with something like this, or if you want to use this on like speakers or something, that will look absolutely insane. Be sure to use my coupon code KingPixelPro at checkout if you decide on getting this really cool plugin. If you guys did enjoy this video or you learned anything at all, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and turning on the bell notification so you don't miss out on a future video.